uh, a nice thermal calorimeter. It's a calorimeter that works at constant temperature. And it's actually, it's a, basically, it's a rather simple device, as I will show here. Uh, it, it actually consists of six parts, six main parts. First of all, we have to have some type of constant temperature environment, a thermostated environment. Uh, and inside that, we have a heat sink, which usually is a metal block, uh, which is used to keep the temperature stable here, together with the thermostated environment. Uh, and then we have a sample uh, on a heat flow sensor. So if heat is produced in the sample, heat will flow out through this heat flow sensor and be recorded by the calorimeter. Uh, and to be a good cal calorimeter, we also need a reference. And the reference is uh, similar to the sample, has a heat flow sensor, uh, but it shouldn't produce any heat. And I'll come back in a later lecture to why you need this reference. So we essentially have six parts. We have the constant temperature environment, we have the heat sink, sample reference, and two heat flow sensors. Six parts, very simple. Uh, now, if you want to make a good calorimeter, uh, each of these components will be more complex, so it's actually not trivial to build a good calorimeter, especially a good sensitive calorimeter, a stable calorimeter, etc. But these are the six parts main part from which the calorimetry is, is, is made. Uh, and uh, uh, this is an isothermal calorimeter, it's an isothermal heat conduction calorimeter, because heat is conducted from the sample through the heat flow sensor out to the heat sink. The thermostated environment here, it can be a liquid thermostate, a liquid jacket, or an air thermostat, it can be made of a metal block that is thermostated, or in a very simple calorimeter, it can simply be in insulation. Uh, and actually, I will show you uh, such a calorimeter. This is the simplest calorimeter you can make, as a thermal calorimeter you can make. Uh, we call it a student calorimeter, and we use it for student experiments. And here you see the six parts, except the thermostated environment, which in this case is just an insulation. Uh, so you can see the five parts inside the insulation. The heat sink, A here, just a metal block. B and D are the heat flow sensors and C and E, the sample and the reference. And here you see that the sample consists of a, of a holder for the vial, or the ampule. Um, so it is exactly two parts. And in this case, the ampules are 20 milliliter glass uh, ampules. And in this case, it's, uh, they are filled with water. Uh, in the reference here, just plain water, no reaction taking place. Here, we want to make a measurement here, and in this case, it's an aqueous solution of a hydrolyzing chem chemical substance. So this is actually a reacting system that produces heat, although it looks like water. So we put that in here and measure the thermal power from that process taking place there. So this is the simplest calorimeter you can think of, and it works well for, produ for, for processes that produce a lot of heat. And if you, if you want to know how to build this type of calorimeter, you can uh, look in this reference, the student calorimeter. In this second lecture, I looked at the different parts of the calorimeter, and uh, in the next lecture, we will look at the, why we have a reference, and how to measure baselines, calibration coefficients, etc., so that we can make a good measurement.